Hey guys, today I'll be talking about how to find your style in 2023 and sort of my personal fashion style evolution. First, I'm just gonna drop my Instagram right here um, on screen. I think everyone's walked through this dreamscape, the fashion field of breeds, and sort of wondering like what will it take to reach that place of happiness, that place of confidence and being content with what you're wearing. And I think that's something that becomes harder and harder. But my aim is not to just make a video talking about my style evolution, but it's more so being able to find happiness in a place that is so often completely materialistic and superficial. Beginning in 2015, I really, I grew up loving skater culture and skateboarding. I think a lot of people in fashion are sort of like that. Not that I'm claiming to be good at skateboarding, but you know, sort of like your Zoomies mall core brands at the time. And that sort of eventually bridged into Supreme and Palace. And I really started there. And then I'd say about 2016 got whacked by the same internet machine that everyone did. And I just became sort of crazy about not only those skater brands, but Adidas, like the boost wave. And I really sort of followed trends and lived by that. And I was content doing that. You know, this started in about seventh grade and went all the way until maybe the end of sophomore year of high school. I took my first art history class in 2019 and I'd always loved it prior, just visiting museums, but I really started to understand you know, what I was looking at and be able to put my finger on what I loved so much about art. Like an image can convey an idea in just colors or a sculpture or something like that. And that's so important to me because I think that that's how I'm able to remember so much is just visual cues sort of. And art history works exactly like that for me, if that makes sense. You know, even still, I wasn't fully disconnected. I really dealt a lot with social anxiety in high school and like not necessarily feeling accepted and I know it sounds crazy to say now but there's definitely a time not too far ago where men especially got made fun of for caring about how they dressed which is always crazy because you know rappers have always been so influential on style for such a long time but in middle school, I got made fun of really early on for being into Supreme. And looking back, it's just sort of crazy because I really always tried to teeter between like acceptance and wearing stuff that I thought was cool. And I think a lot of like hype beast culture surrounded that, like this wanting to be accepted by a group. And there's definitely a lot of status signaling in there and all these other sort of toxic elements, but I think that I realized that I appreciated fashion in a way that I appreciated art. Towards the end of the school year in 2019, I applied to a program through the Putney School to study in Japan for about a month during that summer. And I got accepted to it and I got to go and study photography and fashion history. That was an absolute privilege to be able to do something like that and I realize that not everyone can do that and I'm not suggesting in this video that you need to do something like that in order to find yourself but for me that is really the push that it took. I think more than anything this opportunity to live completely isolated on the other side of the world without the influence from basically everyone everything at home it left me void of the typical social anxiety that the media would have on me, that people I went to school with would have on me. You know, it was a fresh start. Because of this, I, I had one friend, Abe, who was equally interested in fashion on this trip. He set a real example for me. His style, his influence was completely void of connection to social media. He just was unapologetically himself. For me, it helped lose that insecurity of how certain people would perceive of like what I wore. That is not to say that you need to run away to Japan in order to solve your problems, in order to find out who you are. I think the best way to organically find yourself is to disconnect from the world from the people around you. And I know that is easier said than done. I think online there are so many groups that feel that way and just explore their passions. And I think the best of them definitely come from Reddit and Styleform and 
just these online pockets that you come across from hours of searching on Google. I think disconnecting from more traditional sources of social media like TikTok and Instagram, super essential in being able to find yourself because they promote a sort of uniformity and conformity in these two apps that are built on the foundation of competition. Who has the most likes? Who has the most comments? Whether it's on the internet or in person, you should find people that have found their identity. Look at them as a way of, you know, seeing a blueprint of how you can find your own identity. I've really found that coming from a point of genuine curiosity, the world of fashion can be so small. And if you approach it with that sort of genuine interest, others can see that and you'll find that you're able to talk to people that you would never come across before simply from that passion that you both share. And it's so important to wear that on your chest because people are often way too afraid to, to show who they really are. I'd say that even Instagram archive pages or, you know, style TikTokers are so damaging because they just promote the same content over and over again. And in this, in this ecosystem, every, everyone follows those pages and thinks that they are on, on something that someone else isn't on because they get to see an old photo of Pharrell or like Jackson Pollock doing splatter paint. At the end of the day, you're just looking at someone else's taste. You're not taking the time to figure out what your own taste is. And I think those are a great launching point, but more often than not, people interact with these accounts and they make an identity out of it. And I think like Hidden New York is a great example of that. Their page is enormous now. And that's not to say that it's not well curated, but the hundreds of thousands of people that follow that all gravitate towards that style. And if you want to do that, that's fine. But in this sort of like elitist space that exists in fashion, people will do that and think that they are somehow better than someone that doesn't do that. And that just doesn't make sense because you are just a sheep following a herder when there are people out there that just don't pay attention to any of that. I think in terms of a blue print an excellent source of information would be Virgil's and I did this the other day I went all the way back to 2012 just to see what he started with on his Instagram and along the way I just sort of realized in 10 years of post Virgil stayed unapologetically true to his beliefs to his influence as an architect and sort of always questioning consumerism and his Duchampian Dadaist tendencies. And I mean, that's why I love him as an artist or for those things, but more often than not, he gets discredited that sort of timeline with such a reaffirmation to just stay true to what interests you. Your identity will form around that and people don't give themselves enough time to grow into that sort of shell. Virgil beat to his own drum for his entire life. He let his design language sort of fill into every aspect. That does not mean that you should dress like him if you don't want to. Instead, it suggests that maybe you should find commonalities of how you organize books next to your bed. What visual cultures connect you and how does that represent you in clothing? For me, I've always been extremely detail-oriented from a young age, everything had to be organized. And my exposure to Japanese Americana brands that functioned off of that core value is immediately what spoke to me and sort of hit a different note in my brain than anything in fashion ever had before. I discovered a deep appreciation for the detail of items, not just in quality, but in the physical story behind how they came to be. And I think that really comes all the way back to what I was talking about with art history. It's the same sort of identity, the history in the item. It's not just the aesthetic appeal of it, but the story that the item possesses, the feathers made by Goro Takahashi, or even just the wild extents that Hiroki Nakamura goes to in Visvim. Having a piece of leather taken from a sheep in France, tanned in Italy, 
then flown to Japan to be hand inspected by Hiroki himself, signed off on and then shipped to somewhere else in the world. There's a sort of story there of just like the chase of perfection. As an art history student, being able to feel that kind of history in what you wear is extremely special. Beyond those brands that come at such a luxurious price point, I think that those same principles can be found, for me at least, I've found that satisfaction in brands like Patagonia or L.L. Bean. In the same way that I feel connected to that sort of Americana, People feel connected like that to vintage clothing in the histories that what they wear possesses. There are things that I've come across simply because it brings me back to an experience I have, such as like a trip that I took to Wyoming with my dad. Now when I come across stuff that reminds me of going out west, it, it feels special to me because of that and it feels like a part of who I am. On the other end of the spectrum, People gravitate towards Rick Owens or other avant-garde labels for a similar connection to punk music and and a sort of darkness that you know they've associated with. And nowadays that gets so blurred through things like you know just being opium aesthetic or wanting to like flex Rick Owens' dark shadow on someone. People sort of lose sight of why they originally fell in love with something. Nostalgia can often be overrated, but in terms of fashion, finding pieces that speak to you like that from a point of familiarity is above all. That definitely sounds like a hack thing to say. It sounds so, but I'm not suggesting that you have to go buy something way fancier to feel that way. I think that you should just find like what stuff interests you, like wear things that represent that. Above all, in an age where everything is connected so closely by the internet, I feel that being able to separate from that is the exact formula to finding out what makes you yourself. Being in a niche like fashion, where everything is seemingly ultra competitive, and a race to be the best and signal status, being chronically online makes you all the more convergent on those ideas. It is exactly like videos such as, what does this brand say about you? Go so viral. People care so much about the archetypes that they present themselves as. It's okay to be sure of who you are means in that moment. Even today I have lapses where I decide to sell half of what I own because it just doesn't connect with me and speak to me in the same way that it once did. It's appropriate and necessary to hold on to sentimental items even if you don't wear them all the time, don't use them all the time. Those things have value and purpose. Don't be afraid to change and experiment. Know that fashion is a thing that grows with you and take it as a means to reflect who you are and what makes you unapologetically you. As I said before, I really find myself constantly changing what's important to me. There will always be a place in following trends and those can often be a good thing, but you should never follow a trend and sacrifice who you are as a consequence of that. I got into fashion at such a young age that I think I have a lot more perspective on that than most people do who get into it. and just struggling for such a long time with anxiety and just not fitting in socially as cliche as it sounds being able to have that time whether it's in japan or you know even just reflecting through covid and progressively doing more research over the years i've really found i think a sweet spot for the moment till the next time please make sure to subscribe drop some feedback thank you so much for watching